What's up, y'all? This is Nina Perez, and this is Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. I'm so excited today to introduce you to this extraordinary guest. I cannot wait to get started, but before we do, I just wanted to thank all of you because last, uh, I think it was yesterday or day before, whatever, I'm at a, almost 100,000 downloads, and I am so excited that you guys are downloading and sharing and doing all of that with the community. You are amazing because you know I go around this amazing planet. I find the best humans that I can find to come on here to grow, challenge, and transform your thinking. I couldn't think of a better person to bring to you right now than David C.M. Carter. And he is, uh, he has his own academy. He is dedicated at helping people realize their true and full potential to become their best selves. Now you guys know I am into that. So he has over 40 years of experience. Now, David has been a trailblazer in various fields from investment banking to leading the world's top CEO business mentoring company. But he's not just a visionary leader, but he's also such a resilient individual. And he has overcome personal and professional challenges, including being a single dad for 20 years. And his life work is encapsulated in his book, Breakthrough. And his role in his academy, which I'm going to ask him how to pronounce it, right, are a testament to his commitment to unlocking potential in others. Now, I am super thrilled to have this conversation, and I'm glad that you guys are here with us. David, thank you for coming to Straight Talk. How are you? I'm very well, Nina. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm delighted to be here. I'm delighted to talk to you, and I want to ask you, how do you say your academy's name? Um, Enteleki. And so okay. Enteleki is a word that was coined by Aristotle two and a half thousand years ago. The Enteleki of an acorn is an oak tree. The Enteleki of a caterpillar ah. is a butterfly. And the Enteleki of Nina is the ultimate version of Nina with all of her potential fully actualized. So oh, I love that, that that's so much. Yeah, okay, because I, I was I was saying Enteleki in my head, and I'm like, I'm going to say this wrong. So <laughs> I'm so glad that you said that. So, David, I have a really great audience. I, I, and, I, um, promise, I promise you something. In the next month, you will use the word Enteleki at least three times in conversation <laughs> with people. Because <laughs> once you... I'm, once, gonna, I'm, <laughs> I, once I'm you, sure <laughs> I will. I'm sure yeah. after this conversation, especially, it'll make me sound more intelligent too, David. So I'm going to probably do that. <laughs> so, you know, I, I really um, love taking our audience on a journey. And I think that's why the podcast has been growing as beautifully as it has, because they've been connecting with a lot of the guests that are on the show. So my first question is always the same because I love the answers that I get and how we can explore that. So who are you, David? Who are you? Um, who am I? That's a very, very good question. Um, <clears throat> well, I am a wounded healer. Hmm. Oof, David, I gotta go grab another mic. I gotta do a mic drop. Why don't we just end the podcast right there? That is so powerful. Go ahead, expand on that. Um, on the day that I was born, at the minute that I was born, the planet Chiron uh, went over the, the London. And Chiron has um, an 18 year orbit. And so my life looks a bit like the Audi uh, car logo of four intersecting circles. Wow. The first 18 years of my life, I spent um protecting my mother and my two sisters the next 18 years of my life i protected and looked after my wife who with together with her we went through nine pregnancies to end up with two children wow wow and then the next 18 years of my life i looked after my two children on my own and brought them up on my own and so this 18 year loop of the planet Chiron, who is known as the Wounded Healer, is about me looking after myself and me leaving a legacy in the world, which is all about the development of character. Wow. 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 
I love speaking to people like you, David, because it expands our mind, it expands your thinking, it expands who we are as people. Because, um, so in one word, who, who am I? I'm a mentor. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And those life experiences that you had in all those, you know, 18 year loops and circles, what do you think has been the most powerful thing you've learned? Um, the most powerful of the three loops was bringing my children up on my own. <clears throat> mm. I learned more about myself trying to be a good single parent than any mm -hmm. other business experience I've ever had. And I've had plenty of business experiences. Um, I really learned who I am and what, what I stand for, my values, my beliefs. And uh, it was, everyone used to say to me, gosh, I bet that was hard. And I used to say, it wasn't hard at all. It was hard work, but it was actually the most bountiful um, period of my life <clears throat> because I learned so much about myself. When you've got two tiny little people who mm -hmm. only have you to look up to and be protected by, then I remember someone saying to me a few years ago, you know, having a tattoo on your forehead is a bit like having children. You better be damn sure you want it. That's and good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you know, as I said earlier, I, I I we went we struggled through nine pregnancies to end up with two children. And when I got a boy and a girl all those years later, it's like, okay, thank you, God. I am going to give this my absolute best shot. Wow. And wow. I had to learn so many new things that I wasn't perhaps trained to do through the parenting of me, the schooling of me, the churching of me, whatever. And so I really went on a journey to find out who I was and today is my son Tom's 33rd birthday and he lives in Portugal and I had a nice lovely catch up with him on the phone today and my daughter Rosie who turned 38 a few weeks ago has just delivered my first ever grandchild oh precious and, and you know they were seven and three when I ended up bringing them up on my own and the fact that we're the three of us are so close and they're so close with each other oh, means good. the world to me. And even though you know they were seven and three and they're now uh 38 and 33, so you know, a long time ago. Um I think I'm still even growing as a parent. <laughs> Hey, you've got a dog too. <laughs> yeah, he just heard the mailman. <laughs> oh, mine, mine's in the kitchen. So um, a beautiful, amazing opportunity for me to learn about myself, develop myself, figure out what was important to me. And so much of all of that experience has absolutely guided me um, to build Entelechy Academy to help the world become its Entelechy through developing 54 character qualities. Wow, that's amazing. How did you get to this point? Like, I know that you went through the four, the four stages, the four rings, the four uh, you know, seasons of your life, which were, you know, sounded pretty tough, right? So uh, personal development is something that you are uh, obviously into and want to mentor and help others. So what was it? What was that shift for you every time? Was there something that was like an aha moment? Was there something that you, you worked on? Was there something that you saw that helped you to become better through the next ring, if you will, of your life? Um, 
absolutely and i'll come to that in a second um i think life is hard for everybody i actually mm -hmm. think all this new age stuff of being in a state of bliss all the time is a complete load of rubbish mm -hmm. um you know life is hard and life in the world today <clears throat> is very hard and um i think that let, let's call it happiness is a bit like the thermostat on your climate control mechanism in your house you can set it at sorry i don't know fahrenheit but you can set it in my country we're at 21 degrees and uh centigrade and it's a bit like happiness. Sometimes you can be a bit more happy than that and sometimes a bit less happy than that or a lot less happy. But it always comes back to 21 degrees. Mm. And life is hard. And, and it's stressful. And so there are two very quick stories. So um, at a very early age... Uh, a very wise person said to me, David, failure isn't falling down. Failure is staying down. Yeah. And that had a very, very profound effect on me. It's like falling down, making mistakes is perfectly normal. But what defines us is what we do after we've fallen down or made that mistake. That's right. And do we bounce back? Do we learn from that opportunity or not? And um, and the second phrase that has guided me ever since I was about 16, and I won't tell you the whole story, but um, I was doing very well uh, at my sport, which was rugby, and I had to have um, a hip replacement operation at the age of 16 very unusual oh. I, ha I happen to be the youngest person in the world to have it done at that time mm -hmm. um and it put paid to the in career that i'd been thinking about and planning for five or six years and sort of went back to zero with zero plan and <laughs> no plan b and i remember thinking gosh if failure isn't falling down it's staying down this moment is going to define me because I, I either stay down now because my entire career planning has been thrown out the window or I pick myself up, dust myself down and figure out. And again, without telling the whole long story, although it's a wonderful story, um, one of the great rugby coaches that I had who had played for England and I talked to him about this hip operation and how I couldn't do what I was planning to do and it, how it was going to completely change the course of my life that I was planning. And I asked him for some career guidance. And he knew me very well. And he said, well, it all boils down to four really simple things. Find something that you're absolutely brilliant at find something that you absolutely love doing, find something that pays the bills, and most importantly, that makes a difference. Mm. And for whatever reason, and I think I do understand the reason, that really resonated with me. And that plus failure isn't falling down and staying down. Those two pieces of advice have guided my so entire good. life. And going back to chiron and the wounded healer you know my purpose in life is to help other people be become the best version of themselves and you know in my journey i've been through massive business successes and a business failure and also you know a couple of marriages and divorces and uh a few other setbacks and near personal disasters but both of those two pieces of advice have always stuck with me and everything that's ever happened in my life that wasn't what i planned you know i've always asked myself the question 
okay so what am i supposed to learn from this right right and sometimes it's very obvious and you can <laughs> see it very quickly and other times it can take weeks or months but you've got to keep digging it what am i really supposed to learn and, and you can yeah. answer lots of superficial questions very quickly but no, 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 that's not it. What is it I'm really supposed to learn from this? And then a week later, a month later, two months later, you have an epiphany and he's like, oh, yeah. that's all. And, <laughs> exactly. And, you know, however self-aware I'd like to think I am, and I think I am pretty self-aware, I also realise, you know, that I am also a human being who watches the news talks to other regular human beings and hears what their concerns about themselves or their community or the world are and although i think i'm very empathetic i also think i'm a critical thinker and so you know at the moment in the world there are so many like I'm 64 years old now. I've never known so many challenges facing the planet. Yeah. From wars in Israel and Ukraine and, mm -hmm. and climate change and God knows what else. And, you know, there are a bunch of people who've got an agenda for this planet that oh, yeah. are way beyond governments. And, mm -hmm. and you know, within 10 years, we're going to have, have central bank digital currencies and digital id and so a lot of control a lot of control mm -hmm. yep surveillance and so everybody better really know who they are and have the ability to develop their own consciousness yeah because if they don't they're going to get left behind and yeah. the way that I have learned over the last 46 years of my career that we raise our consciousness and develop ourselves is through developing these magical 54 character qualities that, you know, were parented out of us, schooled out of us, churched out of us, community yeah. out of us, uh, media out of us. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, I've never met anybody <clears throat> who said well being kind is a bad thing right. being being generous is a bad thing being grateful is a bad thing being organized disciplined reliable accountable responsible collaborative you know all of these 54 characters and everyone goes oh, well yeah, of course my life would be better if i was more of that one or that one and and we absolutely have the ability to learn quickly as well yeah how how to dial up any one of them i i, uh, I believe that i also i don't mean to interrupt i'm sorry go ahead no, no, please carry on oh i was gonna say I, I i believe like everything you just said is so true i also see the world sometimes and wonder what happened to those characters those characteristics in in some people right um because sometimes no matter how kind uh resourceful uh, disciplined or any of those things you are trying to be somebody's challenging it you know or saying that's not right or has their own view of what that would mean um so you talked earlier about setting a thermostat right and i was just wondering how do you set the thermostat to begin with so what is it that you can tell someone right now who's listening on whether it's happiness or maybe a thermostat in something else personal development you know things like that that how do you start to set the thermostat um okay so that's a very good question so i think my belief is that uh, you can't set the thermostat. Um, it is just 21 degrees for everybody. Ah, got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. And so you can't set the thermostat, but what you can set is your own temperature. You can raise it or lower it. Mm. 
Mm. Um, and I think that one of the most beautiful things about what we do, which is at the same time one of the most sh shocking but beautiful at the same time, is so very crudely and very simply, when someone starts work, an individual starts working with us in a company, um, we get them to look at these 54 character qualities and to, to, to rank themselves. Um, this one is a super strength. This one I'm kind of okay at most of the time. This one I'm neither good nor bad. This one I could work on this a bit sometimes. And, and this one I definitely need to work on. <laughs> well, just by doing that exercise, they're like, oh, this is how I see myself. Mm. This is my starting position. Self-awareness. Well, now you go out and ask 10 people who worked with you and know you well and love you and care about you and want to give you some feedback and ask them how they see these 54 character qualities in you. And then you, you basically get one of four reactions. Um, and let's say you've asked 10 people, oh, this is great. I see myself as organized and so do nine out of my 10 assessors. So I'm clearly mm -hmm. organized. And I carry on doing that and sh showcase it more. Um, this one is also very interesting because I don't see myself as particularly collaborative. And by the way, neither does anybody else. And I'm in a team, and in fact, I'm a team leader with other team leaders. So I clearly need to dial that one up. Yeah. And the other, the other two are very interesting. Is that I see myself as wise, but nobody else does. It's <laughs> um, funny. And, uh, but everybody else sees me as humorous, but I don't see myself as humorous. And so then it's like, wow. But what we get everyone who does your feedback to do is to say, well, Nina, I see this as a strength of yours. And here's an example of when you do that. So please do more of it. You're like, okay, clock that. I can do more of that. But here's an example of something that I don't see you as particularly good at. And here's what good would look like. Mm. And you're like, oh, I could do that. That's easy for me to do. I, you know, because I, I see myself as being collaborative. But if you want me to be collaborative by demonstrating this behavior, and nine of your assessors have all given you feedback, we'd love you to see, see you being more collaborative. And here's how that could look like and sh show up. And you're like, well, I can do all of those things. Right. And guess what? In three, three months' time, we do a mini 360 around collaborative. And now nine of your 10 assessors have switched it from a growth opportunity into a strength. Right. And so really good. It's the most powerful piece of feedback you will ever get on yourself. So good. Because not only can you compare how you see yourself with how other people see it, but they're giving you feedback as to what good looks like, either as a strength to carry on doing or as a growth opportunity to develop. So. It's yeah, so that's powerful. really, really, yeah, I, that is powerful. I, I did something similar with my team. I did a 360 feedback and I had them all assess my management and my directorship um, and uh, ask them a lot of different questions about how I lead the team, how I communicate, you know, things like that. It was so good. It was so good. And you also have to be somebody who's willing to receive the feedback because otherwise you're going to push back, right? So um, it was very interesting. Like, well, you don't do this. We wish you did this more. And thank goodness that I've always uh, really worked hard on developing an open mind for feedback. It's not always easy. You don't always want to hear it if it's something that you really think strongly about yourself. But then somebody says, no, you don't do that. But I think it's so powerful, David, to your point, because it changes you. And it helps you to become really self-aware, but also aware of how you show up in the world, right? Like how people are when they're around you or what they're going to think of you when you leave them. I think it's the most important, right? Um, so is that what you're doing with the, with the, with people who work with you now? Is like you, you're taking them through yeah. the academy and okay. 
so um the, but the, the next statement is true so um the most googled subject where people are trying to found, find out what it is is the word love mm. the second most googled phrase where people are trying to understand what it is is leadership and there's 8,009,427 different answers to both of those <laughs> questions. <clears throat> right. And so 360s that say, please rate me as a leader, please rate me as a manager. You know, what you want, to, you want to go to the domain below that and say, am I kind? Am I collaborative? Yeah, am yeah I that's what I mean. I like that. Yeah. And, and because then people go, well, you're very good at this, but you're not so good at that. And you're awful at this, but brilliant at that. Do a lot more of that one. And please do some of this. because, And, and, and it's the behaviours that underpin management or leadership That's that right. you want to get the That's feedback right. on. Yeah. And um, Amy, our COO, she's got a great phrase. And we all love it, which is that feedback is the fuel of champions. Oh, and that. you know everybody likes to everybody likes to read about themselves and learn about themselves. Well, when you get our character key report on you, it's like, oh my gosh, this really is me. This is how I show up in the world. How people That's see so me, and every one of them, they're giving me advice on how I could show up even better with this. And I'm thinking, I can do that. That's easy. I'm, I've got no problem with doing that. No, I'm not sure about that one. So maybe I'll go and talk to Fred about that one because he's given me that. I don't quite understand it. But then I sit down with Fred and say, look, you gave me this feedback about being more collaborative or whatever it is. Talk me through that. And then after a conversation, say, oh, that's what you meant. Okay. Didn't quite understand it from your feedback in the three six, but now I do. I can do that if that would make you happy and uh, that would work for both of us. And so when you've got a team of a dozen, two dozen people going, I want to collaborate and get on better with all of my colleagues and work in a way that works for me and for them. And they're all giving me advice about how I can do that. It's like, who, who's going to turn and say, screw you guys. I'm just going to do my own thing. And right. On, right. Right. Well, I think the only one that would do that was somebody who is really closed minded and doesn't want to have some development in their life, because I think that could be super powerful, not just for leadership and in businesses, but in your life relationships, right? <clears throat> I'm thinking of something like where you can speak to your spouse, your children, your loved ones about, you know, what you uh, contribute to the family and how powerful that could be. You know, how do I show up in the family? Um, that's super powerful, David. And I know, I, I know a lot of the people who listen to my show are leaders, CEOs, solopreneurs, things like that. So this can be very, very helpful for them. I know it's gonna, it could be very helpful for me too. Right. So I'm just wondering, um, how do people actually so I just, get, I just want to chip in very quickly. Going back yeah, yeah, to yeah. something we talked about 10 minutes ago. Um, I used to say to my children, um, okay, there's some, some something we need to talk about, and it's this. Um, are you okay if I talk about this? Are you okay if I give you some feedback on this? Are you share my thoughts on this? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then afterwards I said to them, have you understood what I've said? Have you got any questions about what I've said? Is there anything you'd like me to explain in a different way so you understand it? <clears throat> are you okay that I brought this up? You know, And they... They used to squirm sometimes <laughs> because they were dying to give me some feedback. <laughs> and I used to say, and I used to say, it's okay, it's safe. Whatever you say, whatever you say is good because I, I want feedback. I'm trying to be the best parent I can be. Now, every now and again, it didn't happen too often, thank goodness, but it did happen, where they'd say something. And I'd be shocked at the whatever it was they said or thought. And I was like, okay, you are 10 and your worldview sees what I've just done as not honest or not decent or whatever. It's like, 
it was and, and but i i need to understand how you see it from that point of view right and to actually understand sometimes even when you're talking to a 10 year old what how they interpret your words through their worldview and that's never left me um and so even earlier on today we had a sort of hr issue and and, and i said to the person at the end of the conversation okay here's what i've heard you've said mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and so if i haven't heard it correctly because i'm going to make a decision based on what it is i've heard and understood correct my thinking and she said you've understood five out of the six points perfectly but the sixth one you absolutely haven't understood it correctly i said okay well help me understand that bit and then you know literally five minutes later i was like okay no i hadn't seen it from that point of view and thank you for having the courage to explain it and now i understand you know the whole story how powerful and and because of what the topic was and it doesn't really matter i said okay well i need to reflect on this i'm not going to give you a decision right now i need to reflect on this because what you told me is very powerful and i deeply appreciate it and i deeply respect it and i don't want to knee jerk react to it and so can i sleep on it overnight and then can we have a chat about it tomorrow morning she said yes of course and and that was about six hours ago and about an hour ago i had a slack message from her saying by the way when we talked about that sixth point i realized blah 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 and actually i've had to think about it and now i don't feel that committed to this (laughs) And so it's just <laughs> created a, a beautiful opportunity for two people who genuinely care about each other and care about the right. business to really be understood by each other. And I'm absolutely 100% so confident powerful. that tomorrow we will end up agreeing a resolution that she's happy with and I'm happy with and will be a very, very strong, powerful resolution. David, that's really, really powerful. I mean, I think that, if all CEOs and leaders, management would treat people that way, would treat each other that way, right? It can be such a great um, example to the team, to the employees, no matter who they are, no matter what rank they are um, on communication and on understanding the humanity and the person they're speaking to. That's super powerful and something we need in the world because there's so much heaviness in the world and people are feeling it maybe at different levels and different times, but we're all feeling it, right? Especially if we're people who spend a lot of time online, you know, on media, on things like that, that it affects you. And so if you can um, treat each other with some decency, it'll take that pressure, that piece off, right? So David, you've left us with so many beautiful beautiful things to think about and stories and um, uh, powerful things that we can implement in our businesses. So before I, you know, wrap up though, I do want my audience to know how they could potentially work with you and your team. Um, So if you can give us that information, like where they can go, how they can, you know, uh, look you up, all that kind of stuff, that would be, that'd be wonderful. And would you like me to answer that now? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, Entelechy Academy has a LinkedIn um, profile, and you can read our white papers and research and thought leadership material on the development of character there. But if anybody wants to reach out to me personally, the best way is through LinkedIn. And so, thank you for introducing me as David C M Carter because if you put David C M Carter LinkedIn, you go straight to the one and only David C M Carter on the planet. <laughs> And so Good. please reach out to me via LinkedIn and I will respond to everyone within 24 hours. Thank you so much, David, for being here and also giving us the, you know, the, the David CM Carter thing is so, in, is so smart. It's so smart, right? Because there's a lot of David Carters. And so for people out there who are like struggling with why they can't be seen in such a loud world, um, it's just so strategic 
to put something in your name or put something there that will differentiate you from other people. So there's not a lot of Nina Perez's, so I'm very fortunate, but uh, there are a lot of David Carter's. <laughs> so David, there's only then, one of you though. <laughs> as my children would say, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> one's plenty yeah uh, well I, I i think one is creating a lot of impact and i want to thank you so much for spending this time with me from your home and from uh really just um pouring into my audience the way you have honestly this was a really great conversation i appreciate you thank you for being here nina can i just add one little thought um absolutely Aristotle coining the phrase and and how that's about the ultimate version of someone with their potential fully actualized. He also had another little phrase, which is that character determines destiny. And mm. what he meant by that was we all end up in life wherever we end up as a direct function of, our, of these 54 character qualities. And I promise you, you know, we go to our IntelliKey LinkedIn, you'll find the 54 character. And when people look at them, they're going, Oh my God, this is just so obvious. You know, I'm really good at this and this and this, but I'm probably rubbish at this one and this one. And if I could dial even that one up, my team would think I'd taken drugs and become a superhero overnight. So, and I, you know, we haven't got time today, but just think about the impact on your own life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of focusing for one week on one character quality, whichever one, but, you know, kind. If you deliberately tried, even though it didn't come naturally, to be kind or kinder to every single person you meet for the next week, starting right now, you'd find me anybody on this planet a week later who won't tell you 10 wonderful stories about how they ended up feeling better about life and better about their career and their marriage so or whatever. And the same applies to every one of the other 54 character ones. So it's so simple, it's so easy, it's so tangible. And so all of your audience can have a much happier, much more fulfilled life if they worked on one or two character qualities a week consciously to dial them up and I promise you it will change their life positively in every single case. I, I, I honestly second that and believe that, um, especially just in this conversation, the, the character qualities that you mentioned are character qualities that we should be looking towards and looking to see where we fall short. We all fall short, all of us. So it's good to be aware of that. So Thank you for your wisdom. Honestly, I, I love conversations like this, David. I love conversations like this, <laughs> but I really want to thank you because um, I'm going to rewatch this, of course, because you just left with so you, you just led with so much wisdom and so much, um, you know, inspiration and uh, a way of looking at life and things. And I, I'm, I'm just so delighted that you were here. So thank you for being here with us. Thank you. So thank cool. You very, thank you very much for inviting me. Loved it. Oh, so good. Guys, I told you best humans on the planet, right? So David C.M. Carter is one of them for sure. I want to make sure that you connect with him. So I'm going to link his information below in the show notes because I don't want you to miss a freaking thing. And if you are somebody who is leading a team, leading people, you know, just really dial in on what it is you need to um, work on this week and see what um, the, the characters are and, and go onto his LinkedIn page and check that out. And if you really feel connected to David, which I'm sure a lot of you do, make sure that you reach out because it is amazing to work with people who are really doing great things on this planet. Thank you guys for being here. This is Nina Perez, straight talk, no sugar added. Until next time.